Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 24th of February with me, Patrick Munley. Unless we see a sizable repricing of China-related risk, the situation appears unlikely to change much next week. The economic calendar in the developed markets is pretty unexciting, and in the US, only durable goods orders, consumer confidence, and the second reading of fourth quarter GDP are due up next week, all with limited market moving implications. Main attention really next week will be on Fed speakers with Richard Clarida, Charles Evans and James Bullard, all set to make remarks. Except for some possible comments on the virus impact, the reiterated easiness of the Federal Reserve with the current policy stance suggests little scope for surprises. On the political side, keep an eye on the Nevada caucuses, which are due Saturday. Given that Michael Bloomberg is not running in Nevada, the spotlight will be on whether Bernie Sanders will be able to consolidate his lead and if Joe Biden continues to lose ground. From a technical perspective, the dollar index uh, stalled out at a retest of the prior cycle highs at the 99.60. We tested through that level this week, but failed to close above it. So there is the potential here now for a double top to occur. However, as 99 level now acts as support, I'll be looking for one more high here to test the monthly descending trend line towards the 130 to 150 level. From this area, we could see a much more meaningful uh, top put in place. A close above there, or a two day close above there, would suggest that we uh, will see trend acceleration to the upside. But for now, looking for a correction early in the week to find support in the 98.50 to 99 level to, uh, to set a base for, for another challenge uh, above this 100 level. Really only a move back through the 98 handle would suggest that this, uh, this double top pattern is more meaningful and we could likely see a sustained correction. While we're talking about the dollar, let's check in with gold. Uh, gold has uh, accelerated higher as the pattern that I've highlighted over the past few weeks is playing out. I'm now looking for a move up to test the 1670 level, perhaps some consolidation, but ultimately look for a test of the 1700 level uh, before we could see a more meaningful high put in. Really this week, only a move back through 1600 would suggest that uh, we're likely to see a, a deeper pullback to retest the base towards 1550. Uh, the economic side in the Eurozone hasn't really, uh, the economic picture sorry, hasn't really improved. The ZEW sentiment indicator provided signals of mounting coronavirus related concerns. And the PMIs released last week were only good on the surface as they signaled a degree of supply chain disruption. Looking at next week's calendar, the German IFO will be one of the key challenges for the Euro. Consensus, according to the Bloomberg survey, is centred at 95.2. Uh, the business climate gauge uh, reading should be down from January's 95.9. Markets are looking for an even weaker reading, suggesting a print below 95. Similar to what we saw uh, earlier last week when the German survey uh, data may have the potential to ignite or, or reinstate the, the downtrend that we're seeing in the euro. In more general terms, the euro still appears in an unpleasant position. The economic outlook for the eurozone keeps worsening and its funding characteristics still prevent it from taking full advantage of a rebound in risk sentiment. From a technical perspective, we did see a recovery on Friday, but whilst we hold symmetry swing resistance at the 108.70 to 109 level, I'd be looking for a, a further challenge down to the, uh, the monthly ascending trend line, which comes in around 107.50. From this level, we could see a more meaningful base put in place. However, if we do take out the 109 from the current low, then I'd be looking for a move to test descending trend line resistance up towards the 110 handle. Next week's gonna be a quiet week in terms of data for, uh, for the UK which leaves really the balance of risk somewhat tilted to the downside with respect to sterling, mostly because markets expect potential comments by both EU and UK officials about trade negotiations 
to be increasingly hawkish and hardly conciliatory. The budget due to be released on the 11th of March is unlikely to match the expectations of this exceptional aggressive uh, fiscal stimulus that the market has been anticipating. From a technical perspective, Sterling stage of recovery um, on Friday is potentially putting in a ascending wedge pattern here, which could see prices move up through the 131 handle to retest range highs up towards 133. Any failure early in the week below 128.40 will be a bearish development, suggesting move down to test support to 127. The yen, the Japanese yen, has really been the underperformer last week, and, um, and we're now trading just below that 112 handle versus the dollar. Um, this fall in the yen has really been a combination of the market uh, shifting from short-term fears, i.e. the global pandemic with respect to coronavirus, to pricing in the long-term impact of the slowdown in China. And Japan is highly exposed in this sense. Rising fears of recession in Japan after the fourth quarter growth data and finally speculation about sustained outflows from Japan as Japanese investors look for more attractive yields abroad as the financial year comes to an end. This week, the market is expecting um, data to once again show that, um, that industrial production has slumped further, and this will likely add um, negatives in terms of the economic outlook for the country. For the rest of the week, really the coronavirus story will remain the key driver as investors are looking for more evidence that the pace of which the virus is spreading is gradually slowing. From a technical perspective, uh, the dollar yen traded up to, uh, to test uh, offers above the 112 handle, and we did see a, a close below there on Friday. As this level now acts as uh, resistance, I'd be looking for a move back down to test the, uh, the breakout point at the, the 110.50 handle. From there, we may set a base to make a more meaningful challenge on the 112.50. In terms of Australian data next week, it really is very quiet. So the attention will be on the coronavirus developments. Markets feel that if positive news keeps dissipating the fears of pandemic, that should be somewhat supportive of the Australian dollar. However, markets uh, continue to position really for an impact on Australian data in the coming weeks uh, once we see the, the feedback loop from, uh, from the coronavirus concerns. From a technical perspective, um, the Australian dollar tested uh, bids down below the 66 handle and we closed back towards the highs of the day on Friday, up towards <coughs> 66.30. As the 66 handle continues to act as support, look for a close above the descending trend line resistance <coughs> at the 67 handle to suggest the potential for a more meaningful base and the challenge of the offers above the 68 level. In Canada, uh, the Canadian dollar continues to outpace the Australian dollar as the Canadian economy is more protected from the Chinese slowdown. However, towards the end of the year, GDP data for fourth quarter may, uh, may hit the loony as quarter over, growth, uh, quarter over quarter growth should come in uh, almost flat. This may revamp uh, some Bank of Canada easing speculation and uh, this, this could be negative uh, for the cap this week. From a technical perspective, as the Canadian dollar uh, continues to find support at the 132 handle, I'd be looking for a test of this uh, major descending trend line up towards the 134 area. However, if we, uh, if we take out the 132 on a, a closing basis, then I'd be looking for a move down to test support back down towards the 130.50 handle. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 24th of February.